Welcome to your daily news report. I am Jared Novotny and we are here with some live breaking news. Today we are going to be discussing the most notorious case of all time, Brown versus Board of Education. So why does this case matter to us today? In order to answer this, let's first answer the question, what was Brown versus Board of Education anyways? It basically stated that keeping kids separated by color in schools is unconstitutional. The 14th Amendment makes this clear, stating, No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Let's look into the educational system today to understand the implications of Brown versus Board of Education. Ed Bill did a study in 2019 looking at different school district borders and found that 969 school borders mark at least a 10% difference in school funding along with at least a 25% difference in non-white enrollment. 132 of these are considered deeply divided with 20% gaps in school funding and at least a 50% difference in non-white enrollment. Part of this occurs because federal data shows that 23 states richer districts get more funding than poorer districts because their school funding is primarily based off income and property taxes. Well, you may be asking, where does the rest of this money come from? According to Education Week's own Jennifer Park, an expert in educational funding, has reported that roughly 48% of funding comes from state resources, which entails your income tax, your sales tax, and other fees. Another 44% comes from property taxes from homeowners in the area, and this is where we see the 23 states who receive more funding towards wealthier school districts because, of course, they are making more money. The last 8% comes from federal funding, which is generally only granted to schools who are suffering or for programs for students who need it the most. One example is the federally assisted National School Lunch Program, which I have previously received, which offers free lunches and low-cost lunches to those who need them the most and are under a certain income threshold. Pew Research Center believes that the issue is deeper than just segregation in schools. As of 2016, according to Pew's Research Center, blacks are making $43,300 a year on average, while whites are averaging just over $71,000. Now, the question we ask is, why? Studies claim it's not just racial segregation in schools, but racial segregation in general. A study by the National Bureau of Economic Research found that blacks earn 33% less than whites, and this number drops to 15% when accounting for education and previous earnings. Basically, what this research suggests is that a white person with the same level of education and previous earnings as a black person is making 15% more annually. Once again, we ask the question, why? While we don't have any studies to prove whether this is true or not yet, Researchers such as Robert Nielsen believe that the 15% difference is due to racial segregation. Robert Nielsen also mentions that this data remains persistent across multiple studies. Researchers at Penn State University find this same gap only at 11%, however, not far off from the 15% previously mentioned. Nielsen concludes in his research that this gap may be due to blacks not being able to get as high of paying jobs as whites which he is also linking to discrimination. And like I said, we don't have any research to support this. A 40-page research paper from the National Bureau of Economic Research finds that job applicants with white names, such as Emily or Greg, are 50% more likely to receive job offers than those with black names, such as Jamal or Lakeisha. Based on the facts presented, I will allow you to come to your own conclusion on racial segregation. Based on the facts presented, I will allow you to come to your own conclusion on racial segregation in public schools and across America. Once again, I am your host, Jared Novotny, and this concludes your news for the evening.